Hey, Mo. Hey, Ricky. How are you? You know what? I'm magical. And guess what? The doctor, the doctor is, is in. in. Yes, the is yes in. we I think are. We, I think we may have just lost our guest, but she'll be back. But That's okay. Dr. Cora and I will be here. I know. You know what? I'm doing really, really well. It's snowing up here in Pennsylvania. Oh, is and it? It's the first snowstorm we've gotten, though, so I really can't complain. It's nice to look at. It was horrible to drive in, but, you know, God is good. And life God is, is good. good. God is good. Yeah, a lot of people got snow today. We were on the phone with somebody from Detroit. They got mm -hmm. snow from New York, uh, upstate New York. We've had, a, oh, from Chicago. From We've had a couple of snow people. We don't, we just have a cold rain here in Maryland. There's mm -hmm. Dr. D. So there she is. We have a great you show know, today with Dr. D. We do. And, and especially in the wintertime, I talk to my patients about feeling beautiful and about a cancer diagnosis and how, you know, the winter blues can set in for sure. And I make sure they have sad lamps, the seasonal effective lamps. And what are you doing that makes yourself feel good? And what are you right. doing for, for that self-care during the wintertime when it's cold and it's getting dark and our joints are all achy? And, you know, this is a great show to talk about these things. So we got talks with Dr. D. How you doing, Doc? I'm doing great. Good to see my SP. So I'm going to do this for her. <laughs> that Dr. Monique Gary and I are, are, we're great friends. The other half of our Sora Posse hopefully is watching this. Sora Emily and Sora Kelly. But it's a pleasure to be here. You know, I love the both of you. And this is a great I topic. I know, you know, it's so funny because, you know, I met you when you were sick. You did. Right? You did. We met when you were sick and, and it sucked. Like it, you were not in a happy place. You were like, and I think you were in the middle of chemo and um, it was not fun. And, um, you know, we, um, you know, look at what, look at you now, look at you now. So, so first we need to make an announcement because a lot of your friends who are, like, are fangirling you are trying to get into our Zoom. So can we say that if you're trying to watch the show, go to facebook.com slash blackdoctor.org and you will be able to see the show. So again, facebook.com slash blackdoctor.org and you will see your precious Dr. D live and in color. So join us <laughs> on Facebook Live. Thanks. So we're so glad you're here and like to show you like how many was that three years ago? Three years ago, I was diagnosed 12-3-2019. I just celebrated my third cancer anniversary. And as Monique knows, I went to Dubai and Cape Town um, and celebrate. celebrated the new year through there and just had an amazing right. time being thankful for life. And, you know, here we are. Here we are. Here, here we are. Here we are. I want you to tell us your story, you know, give us the, the abbreviated version uh, of it in terms of like the timeline of things, but tell us how you got to this point. And then we're going to dig, dig into some of the lessons and some of the advocacy work and how and why you're doing what you do. But, you know, a lot of people watching, I might be recently diagnosed or know somebody who is or in support of somebody. So tell us that moment for you. Yeah. And I'm going to let your friends in and we're going to talk to them. <laughs> so, so I was diagnosed. It's real. It's ironic. I um, had a what's called a fibroadenoma, which is a non-cancerous tumor. Um, many women of color have very dense breasts, and I had that at 16 and had it removed. I had it again during residency, had it removed, and then had it again in two. 17. Ultrasounds I was having probably in my 20s and early 30s and started mammograms around 35. And I was told it was negative, so I ignored it because I did not want to do surgery again. And then I to 18, it became painful. I had a, um, a fine needle aspiration. 19, which is why I advocate not waiting when you have a mammogram and ultrasound. Um, it was just a situation where I was like, okay, I'm going to do all this work when I come back from Martha's Vineyard. And I delayed it. Um, came back and my ultrasound mammogram was abnormal. Spoke with my mom. She had that happen. She was like, we should be fine. I scheduled my biopsy as recommended. MRI guided biopsy. 
uh, gosh, probably two months after. I just wasn't really pressed about it. And unfortunately, I got the diagnosis of stage 2B, HER2 positive, ERPR, weekly positive, which Dr. Gary will get into, I'm sure. They're going to put my um, diagnosis. And that's when my journey began. And as I was going through this journey, I realized that being a physician, I was afforded certain privileges that the average person, particularly a person of color, was not given. Um, my surgeon knew my OBGYN. My OBGYN is one of my besties, Dr. Nicola Pemberton um, of Artemis OBGYN. My medical oncologist was my good friend and her colleague was another friend, which is from the Atlantic Health Group, um, Dr. Charlize Pont and Dr. Maitali Rao. My interventional radiologist is Dr. Joanna Emelo. We're friends. So I realized I was getting people who had my back. I still did a second opinion with Sloan Kettering and they agreed with the treatment I was receiving. And I decided to make lemonade out of lemons. And I said, if I'm getting all this benefits, even though it's a situation that's not great, what can I do to empower people who are going through this? And hence, Talks with Dr. D was born. Wow. Oh, and so, so Talks with Dr. D focuses on all things beauty and, and wellness. And talk to me about why that particular facet of advocacy, not that it's the sole facet, but what is it about, about beauty? And, and why is that something that your organization really does pride itself on focusing on? So I think the organization focuses on wellness and I think beauty people keep forgetting is a part of wellness. So I public speak as you know, and I've spoken to many people about empowerment and making my favorite phrase, making lemonade out of lemons. And so what I realized that post treatment and even in treatment, my, I, I started losing some hair. Everybody knows who's known me. I've modeled for hair, different hair companies and things like that when I was living You are in the all city. about the hair, girlfriend. Like every time I see you, you have a different view. <laughs> and it's so, yes. it's beautiful. That I mean, Thank that's you. like a, that's an accessory for you. Right? It, is. Here. it definitely yeah. is. And so that was a devastating portion. I mean, I went through everything, but I would definitely say, Ricky, when I was in the shower and I realized when I went to wash my hair, my hair was, um, had a short, chemically relaxed or chemically straightened style. And the back was mostly natural, but the top wasn't. And I went to wash my hair. My hand got stuck and I went like this and hair was in my hand. And I think that really was the clincher and the cincher of, oh my God. I have breast cancer. Like I understood it. I was sick with chemo, but that was it for me. And yeah. my mom was amazing because I ran over to my parents hysterical. My father was kind of like, well, aren't you supposed to lose your hair? You know, he's your dad. And right, 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 right. And my mom was like, she started quoting India Irie, you are not your hair, you are not your skin. And I was like, okay, okay lady. But it really made me laugh and it empowered me. So I did a cool yeah. cap which many people may or may not know. It's a type of hyperbaric oxygen. It looks like a swim cap that gives very, very cold oxygen to preserve your hair follicles so that you have a very high percentage of retaining most of your hair and or getting your hair back if you've lost it. So this is all my hair, not a weave, no pieces. And um, I was grateful for that. I realized that when I looked in the mirror, as I was telling Ricky, I saw cancer because my eyebrows were very thin. My eyelashes thinned out and were half the length they used to be. And people were like, you look great, you look great. And I was like, all I see is cancer. So one of the things I did was pair up. I have a lot of things that I started saying, what can I do that's healthy for me to feel better? Number one, as we know, the big topic about hair relaxers, I completely wasn't going back to that. I decided I would do color because nobody likes to be gray, but relaxers were out. I did not want to increase my risk of recurrent breast cancer and or uterine cancer. So that was out. Number two. So I was like, I need to look in the mirror and see the beauty that people say they see, which I'm not seeing. I was very blessed to um, have my sorority sister, so Shana and her business partner, Tamika Nicole, come together and they were great and saying, well, you know, what do you see? What do you need? So I had what's called ombre micro shading of my eyebrows, which are- What does that mean? 
So ombre, they, they do microblading where it's almost like a tattoo, but micro shading became even softer to look natural. And if you were really skilled, you did ombre so it matched your natural hair color versus a just fake color. And I did it with Tamika and you can find her at Tamika Nicole Beauty on all social media. And I was like, oh my God, my eyebrows are back. And then she did individual lashes on me. And at that point, you couldn't tell me I wasn't cute. I was feeling myself. In Sounds addition like to it that, hurt, though. Does it hurt? Sounds like it hurt. It was a little uncomfortable, but I was like, hey, you know what? If you can go through chemo and have a fork, you can go through anything. Well, you're, yeah, you're a you badass. Our, our so, threshold for pain is just ridiculous. It's completely different. Exactly. It is. And so Sorshana has C by the spa but she has a fantastic spa in Irvington, New York. And she has skincare products and the facials. And she just took good care of me, making sure that my skin, which for me, I would break out badly and then clear up and look pristine. Every three weeks, it was a cycle and it was driving me nuts. So post-chemo, as I had a break and knew I was going into radiation, I needed to have a great skincare line. And her skincare line was amazing, which I have, which is a soap and then Tamika's um, skincare oil. And that's literally all I use. And I get compliments all the time. Your skin, your skin. And I'm like, it's because of these ladies and God. Um, thank you. Well, I, so I, that think you had some, I think your natural beauty is playing a big role here. Okay, like you can okay. give credit to all these lovely products, but it's <laughs> starting, you know, your ground zero is pretty amazing. So, well, then I have to thank my mother and my grandmother for yes, that. There you, yes. there you go. And they're on. And um, right. my mom likes her products too. So that was amazing. Um, and then it was just a matter of, well, you know what? Again, having surgery, as you know, Ricky, you, sometimes you have the drains in. If you've had a mastectomy, you know, you had missing breast, reconstruction, lumpectomy, it's a lot. And during the time that I was diagnosed, I we were in COVID, which is, you know, the story yeah. of my life. I'm going to write a book about it as I keep getting prompted. I'm going that's to write right. a book about it. You have to. But I have to because that's an experience as a doctor practicing with all those things going on. You can't make up. But one of the things I realized, my um, sorority sister again, um, Nicole Inzaba, she formed something called the Captain Cuties. And a Captain to me meant a moo moo. And I, your girl is too cute for that. So that was not going to happen. And she laughed at me and said, what a beautiful way to feel beautiful now that we're working from home where you can look, unless you have to dress up corporate wise, you can look nice and professional mm -hmm. pulled together. But Cordai, even with surgeries and things you're going through, it slips on. I'll bring this down a bit. It covers. Stand up. And stand up. Like, yeah, that's gorgeous. Stand up. You look so beautiful. When you stand, stand up, up before, I was like, wow. Oh, that is yeah, gorgeous. gorgeous. Look at the sleeves. I want that. I think we need some. I think we need some of those so for touch, Ricky. More about it. So what happened was she bequeathed me with one in pink and green, which I like. And I was like, ooh. And then my other, our other source, source Suzanne Greenwich, Dr. Greenwich, she's an OBGYN, bequeathed me with this one. So you couldn't tell me I wasn't cute. I had no hair. I used to wear my little African wraps with these, but I would go on Zoom and connect with friends and family and felt beautiful no matter what was going on here. And so it's the captain has its own Facebook group on Facebook. And also she has a designer that's a part of it, Malcolm. With Ricky, you need to reach out to them because I'm you would look amazing and in it. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to put all this stuff in the comments. So you're gonna have to help it. me to make sure we have Not all these links. We will definitely do it. But Captain Cuties on Facebook. Captain um, Cuties. Captain Cuties. Uh-huh. And then for the skincare products. It is Tamika Nicole Beauty, T A M E K A Nicole Beauty, and the spa and skincare products as well, because they do lashes and the ombre micro shading, which is amazing. Our lovely sorority sister, Dr. Monique Gary, C, is it? By the C, C by the spa by Shauna Elizabeth, and she's amazing. Wow. All right, so you may need to help me with this. You got we'll, we'll, we'll put it in the chat. Yeah. Put it in the chat. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You're just so, joining us. I Hold on a second. Chat. We're going to pause because a bunch of people just logged on on Facebook. Folks were trying to get into the Zoom. This is like the, this, this is like it's club like, quarantine. I know. Over this here. is club Dr. D, man. You it can, really I, is. I, I kicked out, kicked five people out of the Zoom, girlfriend. I said, I'm sorry to kick y'all out. 
if, if you're just joining us, this is the doctors in our weekly show on blackdoctor.org, but we have the one, the only, the amazing, right? Dr. Often imitated, never duplicated, Dr. D, Dr. Cordai Dakota, who is a board certified podiatrist in New Jersey. And so she's not only a breast cancer advocate, not only a survivor, not only a CEO, not only with this lived experience, but she's also a medical professional. And I think doctor. that that's, yeah. And we got some questions in the chat about neuropathy and things too, Doc. You know, you are a podiatrist, Absolutely. so we want to get your, your professional opinion as well. But we're talking about turning lemons into lemonade, or like I like to call it limoncello, because, you know, sometimes you like a little, little sip. But um, <laughs> taking the lemons of life and of cancer and those lessons and turning them into blessings for other people. So that's what we're doing here. Dr. D is like knocking it out left and right. And she's talking about, the the journey right like people you know when you when your doctor gives you that diagnosis i i know i give it all day every day right you it's do. hard to wrap your mind around all the things that are going to happen to you and mm -hmm. how prepared did you feel for all of these things for the the, yeah. the hair loss the chemo the you know nausea uh neuropathy any of that stuff even being in medicine how did it prepare you no i feel no one could be prepared i felt like you know, I'm a doctor, I know it's not my specialty, but I am fine. But when I got that diagnosis, my surgeon, Dr. Margaret Sacco, I've overlooked, amazing, Sloan Kettering trained, called me, which again, privilege because of being a physician, you know, you don't call a patient, you have them come in. So when she told me that, I didn't even let her speak. I thought she was telling me I had a fibroadenoma, the non-cancerous mass again, and told her, girl, I ain't looking at that until January, until she told me to sit down. So my sister, who's an attorney, went with me. My OBGYN, Dr. Nicola Pemberton, closed, shut her practice for a minute and said, Dr. Dakota has been diagnosed, I'm out. Again, privileges afforded. We sat with my surgeon and I can tell you that there's things I didn't recall. My sister being the attorney oh, broke yeah. everything down and it better match. And there's things that I forgot, you know? I was like, okay, um, I was overwhelmed. Because yeah. I kept, even though I knew I was going to live, it was like, oh my God, this is cancer. How do I tell my family? How do I tell my friends? How do I work for my patients? And I realized that life was going to change. Um, I was pulled out of work between, what is that? March and uh, July, because COVID was at its height and I was immunocompromised as all right. cancer yeah. patients are. Yeah. And I, I didn't, didn't know what to do. Um, my oncologist was like, I, I must have consulted five different specialties and no one could agree. And finally, everybody was like, she's out of work. And I was part-time before that being diagnosed, still seeing patients only in my office. Neuropathy did happen to me where I realized one day, I think feel funny. <laughs> and neuropathy mm -hmm. basically is the sensation. It can be tingling, burning, crawling that can happen in the lower extremities and in the hand. They can call it a stocking glove distribution, meaning you feel like you're wearing gloves and you feel like you're wearing stockings. Some of the topical treatments are capsation. Some of the oral medications can be gabapentin, which is effective. But there's also Cymbalta, there's also Lyrica, and those are the medications that I would use on patients. I, being on tamoxifen and a host of chemotoxic agents, did not want to go that route. My um, neuropathy was bearable where I felt like eventually it would go away. And I was blessed that once I stopped chemo, it went away. Um, so that's a lucky story for me. It doesn't always for everyone, but the, starting with those types of treatments, there's even TENS units that we use on patients as well, are effective treatments for neuropathy. And you really should see your doctor like myself and or your neurologist if you're experiencing those symptoms. They are treatable and you don't need to suffer with it. What's well, so funny? I never really had it bad, but mm -hmm. um, um, but when you when I talk about it, I could feel it in my toes. Like even now, like I don't really think about it. Isn't that crazy? So eleven years I later, that, like we're talking about it, and I could feel my toes tingling. But that's it's traumatic. <laughs> so weird. It's traumatic, Ricky. You're like, wait a minute. One day you're normal. All of a sudden you're like, wait, what is what is that? You know. So you're gonna remember it when the body changes. You know, right. there's a trauma. Right. There's a psychological aspect to cancer right. that people forget and that is the trauma yeah. of it yeah, yeah it totally is 
So what do you do for that? Because, you know, we we are, I, I said to somebody earlier today, I said, if you were watching Family Feud and asked 100 people, you know, what blank, black women, the word strong would probably pop up more times than not. It'd be like the number one and number two answer. What do we do for that strong one, black woman trope? in the setting of this cancer diagnosis? Who do you fall apart to and how do you piece together your mental health after a diagnosis? Even beforehand, because somebody in the chat is getting a mammogram and they say they don't even know what to ask and they're afraid. Like, let's talk about the, the mental health aspect of it. Yeah. Absolutely. So for me, I was blessed to have a village. Um, I spoke to my yeah. friends. I spoke to family. I didn't, some people, there's no right way to deal with cancer. For me, I'm a talker. So that was therapeutic for me. I did not get therapy until literally 2021 when I just finished it because I was so worried about staying alive because of COVID. That was my biggest thing. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. And also the emotional toll it takes on your friends and family. I saw the tears. I had colleagues who couldn't even talk to me. They cried and said they would call me back. My neurologist, she's like an aunt to me. I'm like, she couldn't talk to me. My, my colleagues like, at the why, hospital. Why are you crying? I'm the one with cancer, right? People would say, exactly. crying, trying to be right, right? So I didn't feel that I had the space to necessarily always break down, even though obviously there were many tears shed, but that space to really break down. And it wasn't until I think I was my, one of my ex-boyfriends I was dating in 2021, and he asked me, tell me about cancer. And I didn't realize that all these emotions were soared inside. I started bawling about it. And I was shocked and I realized, you know, he can't be my therapist. I need to go to therapy. And that is one of the best things I will tell anybody. There's free therapy online. You, if your insurance pays for it, go that route. But even you're at churches, because there's a lot of LCSWs work for churches. You need to have someone objective to listen to what you have to say and get it all poured out without someone telling you what you should do, if you should do, when you should do, because that doesn't always work for everybody. Everybody has to process differently and individually the way they process, but definitely therapy, which I recommend for everyone. Right. So Dr. D, I'm now only letting people in that have your same last name. <laughs> my parents are going to kill me. Sorry, Unless Sam. It's Coach Hollis. Who's Hollis? Is, is Coach Mo joining my us? Dad. Or- I know. Oh my it's goodness. my dad. <laughs> oh, Collis, we're going to send you the link to go on Facebook and watch the show, sweetie, okay? Unless Thanks, he wants dad. to say something. And you know, dad to wants to say, Dad, if you're, if you're here, you got to come on camera. About his daughter and about her journey. <laughs> there he is. Now you're on the show, Dad. I like that sweatshirt. <laughs> you got to talk if you're on the show. Hey, Dad. Dad, you're on mute. We can't hear you. <laughs> Okay, now we can hear you and see you. Hi, Dad. Hi, baby. How are you doing? Good. So you are on Facebook Live with a million people listening to you. So Ricky wanted to know if you wanted to say anything since you're on camera right now. You should not be on this link. It's my fault. But you're okay. here. So she can you're see here. the face. We were just talking hey, about support. Let system. mommy talk. Let mommy talk. I... Oh, perfect. Uh, hey, mommy. <laughs> hey, mom. I didn't even get to brush how beautiful she is. <laughs> Move your camera up just a little bit. Yeah, I can't see you, you, Mom. Move your camera up just a little bit so we can see your your face. Yeah, there you you are. Hey, Mom. I didn't pull my hair yet. I was coming to girls up myself first, and then I'm in front of the camera. I was gonna, you know, put in my. You look beautiful. You look beautiful. You look beautiful. We were just talking about. It's a woman's thing. It's a woman's thing. Don't worry. I love it. It's a woman's thing. (laughs) <laughs> we're talking about support, mommy, and we're talking about, you know, when your daughter goes through a cancer diagnosis, what went through your head and how did you manage with all of this? Oh, it was, it was terrible. It, when we, we went, I went, I kind of blanked out for a minute. I couldn't think straight. And um, I'm a retired ER trauma nurse, so I'm used to dealing with crisis and you know, extreme stuff. But when it comes to your child, mm-hmm. your emotions is different. Your, your, your brain just goes like it doesn't function at the moment. And um, at that time, I started thinking, I started praying, praying in my mind. And my, um, my other daughter, just the younger one, she just grabbed me and she says, Mom, let's go upstairs and go and lay down and calm down for a minute. Just take it easy. And it was, it was like a, like a bullet hit me, you know, it was like, since, and there was nobody in the family anywhere in the family on either side that had that word. 
So it was like, you hear about it. I've, I've seen patients with it, but in the family that never, it never existed. So it was traumatic. But then we started pulling ourselves together and she was exposed to all the, the, all the right places to get the care. And she also had tremendous support out, outside as well, because Corda is, is a child, always puts herself out for other people. She's always present. She does. And um, they came. Everybody came. I mean, the hand, the arms was wrapped around her. And that gave me a lot of peace and grace because she wasn't doing it alone and we weren't doing it alone. Because mm -hmm. I, I could tell everybody was holding her up. And so she wouldn't fall down. And, um, you know, being a child, she is, she's always been a, a caring person and a very strong person. And when she had to handle this, I could see how it, it took some of her strength away. So her dad and I had to hold up and, you know, try to hold her up and not let all of us fall apart. And um, she said to me, mommy, when you have lemon, you make lemonade. Yeah. You just don't waste the lemons. And she took it to another level. And, that's what, she's and that's what she's doing now. She just wants to be an advocate. She wants everybody to hear the, the truth. Yes. Especially minority women, they get the least of the information. And mm -hmm. somehow they think that they don't need to get information because they wouldn't be able to, to, to handle it, they wouldn't be able to afford it or whatever. But mm -hmm. um, she pulls everybody in. And right. um, this is who she is. And as, a, as, as her mother and her father, we try our best to pull her together and be there for her. 24-7. Okay. So, Mom, we're, we're going to take you off, Mom and Dad. You're not supposed to be on this link. Okay. That Ricky's going to gonna send you a link. It's my fault. Ricky's going to send you a link. And okay. um, Gary Williams, send you a link to log on Facebook. Go on Facebook and Google. You'll see Black Doctor Org, and you'll be able to see the show and comment. Okay? Okay. Okay. But thanks for Bye, coming, everybody. Oh, thank you for uh, the comments. You. I know. Thank you for that. <laughs> I think, Core, I want to talk about, you know, generationally, right? And even culturally, yeah. stigmas yeah. in our community, because I think the younger generation is starting to feel like we're more open about our health and we're kind of sharing more, but the older generation maybe doesn't feel that way. And I, I want to know um, if you felt pressure or if you think people still feel pressure to keep their diagnosis to their self. And like, uh -huh. how do we... How do, how do we give people the freedom and autonomy to do that? And that's, you know, fine if that's their choice, but also mm -hmm. help us to have these conversations about our family history and about the cancer that's killing us, right? Like, can we talk about the, the stigma and silence versus being so open with your health and where we are with that? I think there's a stigma, you know, particularly in the minority community, we stigmatize everything, you know, the C word. You know, and my family's from yeah. the Caribbean. So I would hear, what she got the ting? I'm like, what ting? You know. <laughs> so because of being a physician, I felt like it I have to be open about it. There's women and men that are suffering in silence that don't want to talk about it because they think there's a stigma to it. They and because of that, it may not afford you to get the treatment you need in a timely fashion. I have a I know someone now who didn't let her their family know again their choice, but they're dealing with late, late stage cancer. I knew that this was a battle that I did not want to take on myself. I think I'm strong, but I didn't think I was that strong. And right. I needed the help of getting to right. chemotherapy. I needed the help, Ricky, when I, I remember every, every time I did chemo, three days after, I would be yeah. violently sick. And I had to get what's called the banana bag, which is a, an IV bag with different electrolytes that I was given because I literally could keep nothing in. I didn't throw up. I had it the other way, but it was bad. I mean, by the time I got to my fourth chemo, I almost didn't want to do it. My GI doctor had to talk me off the ledge because I was constantly having to be on fluid. So to do that by yourself. And again, I was in COVID. So there was times that I couldn't be around my family. There was no vaccine. So it was a matter of, I would call it detoxing at least five days from being touched by someone before I could mask off with my parents, hoping I wasn't giving them anything. When I had surgery, I was down in my parents' basement with my mom double masked and gloved because she couldn't touch me. And I remember the first time I got hugged by my parents, I bawled my eyes out because I hadn't been touched by anybody because I was so high risk. Yeah. So to me, I feel like 
besides if you have family and friends, wonderful, but the advocacies like myself, Talks with Dr. D, and obviously um, Touch the Black Breast Cancer Alliance are wonderful places to go to for the information. And people email me all the time. I hope you guys do if anybody's diagnosed where I can talk to you and tell you what you should ask your doctor. There's a lot of times right. we're overwhelmed. I just went through it with Dr. Sacco with one of my sorority sisters and they gave me the permission to be on that consult. And she said to me, I didn't understand half of what she told me. We went out for brunch and I took a salt shaker and I explained to her, this is what your cell looks like. These are the three proteins and literally broke it down to her where she can make an informed decision of what is next. And that's where we're missing a lot of that. Where sometimes we're just so overwhelmed because it's information we've never heard. We're emotionally distraught. Our family is distraught and we don't know how to process to make an informed decision for ourselves. Right. We don't, we need, you know, I was so blessed to have a really good support system too. Mm -hmm. But you know, when I, I see so many breasties every day that are doing this alone and my and heart goes mm -hmm. out to them because I don't know, I don't know how they do yeah. it, you know? And so we try to provide support and, and we do, mm -hmm. but even in our, you know, we do touch talk every month on the first Saturday of every yeah. month at 11. If you guys don't know about it, you know, email me and we'll make sure you get the information. But um, we had a, we had a huge group the first of the year. And, you know, I think people just found us after the holidays and um, there were so many, so many breasties fighting this fight alone. And I think that just being in that environment of touch talk, being around 40 other breasties on Zoom gave them mm -hmm. comfort that they hadn't been able to get. So we try to do that and provide that love and care, but there's nothing like that physical touch, that hug that, you know, that so many of us couldn't get during COVID. But I mean, exactly. this was even now that we're, we're vaccinated, like even, you know, I've talked yeah. to women and yeah. some men um, yeah. that are not, you know, virtually. And sometimes just to say, girl, you know, because a lot of times they think I'm Dr. Dakota, I'm going to come to them very, and I don't, I come to them like, hey, friend, hey, how are you? And you can see that even the anxiety levels, you can tell in the yes. tone comes down because I'm talking to you like your friend versus your physician, because right. I need you to hear what you may have missed and really understand to go back to your physician and ask questions and get a second opinion if you're unhappy with the first opinion and get a third opinion if you're unhappy with those opinions. And a lot of times we don't advocate for ourselves because we simply don't know that we can. And that's why these advocacies are important. Right. Mm. Now we have another person. Oh, this is your dad again, coming back in. Mm -hmm. Please let Don Don come back in. He oh, made a mistake. He'll be all right. Don't be I made a mistake again. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Yes, uh, Dr. Dakota, Dr. Cordai, I gotta say, more people with neuropathy are in this chat, and you you may have a, a different type of podiatry, a podiatric practice pretty soon, focusing and specializing in innovative treatment oh, options for, yes. for cancer neuropathy, especially because people are in need and they're asking for it. I, I want to talk about um, health literacy, Hold on right? Second. Dad, mute yourself, or, or actually, I got him. I got him. Thanks. Let's talk about a little bit about like health literacy. You know, how much should people know before a diagnosis? Because it's it's such a tricky thing, right? To you, you had some fibrocystic changes, and I'll let you talk about what that is. But how do we get women more aware of like breast health before the diagnosis? What what should they know? Breast health, I mean, you should be doing a self-exam, but sometimes we have to talk about health equity and health disparities. How do you know, what if you can't afford to see your doctor? What if you've lost your insurance? It happens to any of us and all of us. One thing is where I work, and I'll give a shout out to Neighborhood Health Services, they're the best in class, no matter what your insurance is, uninsured, underinsured, insured. So you always can see a physician. And a lot of times we don't know that because we assume I have no insurance, I can't do anything. And that is not true. Fairly qualified health centers are across the country that provide those types of care so that you're never alone. Number two, learning about your doctor, you know, should be teaching you or showing, asking you to examine your breast. A lot of women don't touch their breasts. They don't know what normals are. So if you don't know what a normal is, how could you know what an abnormal is until it's something that's very pronounced or you're feeling pain or you're seeing dimpling in your breast or a change in your breast? Right. So really a self-exam should be done monthly. If you're menstruating, it should be done um, after your period. 
and you should know what your breasts feel like. And 40, which I disagree with, is the age that mammograms begin. And, you know, I'm a bit, I think that women of color, just like the colorectal cancer, can, um, excuse me, colorectal cancer, as we saw with um, Chadwick Boseman, 40 is too late for a lot of us. And a lot of us are getting diagnosed in our 20s. And so, you know, in the state of New Jersey, you have to be diagnostic versus routine for you to get an ultrasound and mammogram paid for. And your doctor needs to know that difference. Otherwise, your insurance will reject it and you just missed your window for being screened. It's a whole thing that's going that has to go to Congress. Organizations like yours, Ricky, are fighting the fight and showing that there's change that needs to happen. But I think that advocates, no matter where we are, so, you know, talking about what's normal, what we need to do, and giving our experiences as honestly as possible, allow the everyday person to be like, ah, this is what it is. Ah, I can do this. Ah. Dr. D says I can do this. And that's why I keep fighting for it so that we don't lose any more sisters and brothers. Yeah. And, you know, you bring up so many good points there about the young thing and knowing your breasts and, you know, so mm -hmm. stay tuned for next week. We're going to launch our new campaign a bit for young women, um, but it's all about black breast health. And mm -hmm. I don't want to give too much of a preview because I want to steal Haley Thunder for next week, but, um, um, and actually, she's, she's going to be doing Pink Table Talk on Sunday at three o'clock on blackdoctor.org to talk about it. But, you know, black breast cancer is a different disease. We have a different disease. And now we have a strong body of data that's validating that our cells are different. Our, you know, everything's different about it. And so guess what? The health before you even get sick is different, too. You know, so how do you take care of yourself and and how do you make a routine like every time you get your nails done, check your breasts. So one's trying mm -hmm. to think put something on the counter, associate it with something in your, in your repertoire of behavior that you do on a regular basis. So then it doesn't become something you have to think extra about or look on the calendar for, but it's just, gosh, I'm getting my nails done. Okay. You know, start filling them up. Right. Um, um, or like, or think about when you change your hairdo, like you do. Like, so I'm like, like, you know, do it then, but I, yeah. there are other ways to think about how you'd make this routine part of your your beauty regimen, right? I like that idea, tying into self-maintenance things. You know, I, I tell patients to make it social, right? If you get yeah. it once a year, then meet up with some friends and you all schedule some Manny's petties or go to lunch after your mammogram right, or, right. you know, in terms of like your annual so that you're accountable to and for somebody because you know they're going right. to show up and that means you're going to show up, right? Because that's what right. that's how it works for us. A lot of times we yeah. have to sort of tether it to, to make sure that we're looking out for somebody else. We like to be our sister's keepers, right? right. And it makes us feel really, anyway, really right? good, we are. right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, but tying it to tying a breast exam to like your self care regimen or your um yeah, your, your hair facial. and your nails or something yeah. that that's really yeah, that's yeah. Deep. Do, a, do a facial do your yeah. boobs you know um mm -hmm. and I think you should I think that I mean I get my friends know you know it's obviously I'm public about it so I'm always like when somebody says girl you know my mammogram was coming up but I didn't do it yet automatically I'm like that conversation where I'm like, and sometimes it's just fear. Um, you know, sometimes people do have a positive genetic history, you know, being BRCA1, BRCA2 genetic testing and knowing they have that, and they don't want to know, you know, or sometimes it's a fear because they know someone that, oh, when they got checked, they found the lump. And I'm like, just because you didn't do the test doesn't make it go away. And just like right. you said, all the beauty things that we talked about, you know, the products that I love from um, Tamika right. Nicole and by the sea by Shauna, um, and also my favorite product, which I keep telling people, we love products as women. This is um, Shayla from uh, 94.7 The Block. She has something called Shaylala Butter, organic and fabulous. And the fact that we'll go and look for these products and we'll go and make ourselves feel beautiful, for you to be around, you should be doing the same thing. If I'm showering to put this lotion on, let me feel my breasts while I'm in the shower to make sure they're okay before I put the lotion on or yeah. while I'm putting the lotion I'll on. Put the lotion on your, your breast, on. right? And put the lotion exactly. on your breast, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It rubs the lotion. <laughs> so I, I, I want to um, I want to talk about or I want to make sure that we cover this body transformation, right? Because we talked about we talked a little about hair, we talked a little bit about brows, we talked about some of the mental health components. But talk to us about the body and what the body's doing during this time, and what you decided yeah. to do to sort of combat the changes that were going on in your own body. 
So during chemo, I lost a lot of weight. Um, you know, I was, I was having chronic diarrhea. So that was part of the, the problem. Um, I remember, and you know, I love my people, but everybody had something, drink a tea, drink a right, you right. Keep drink juicing. tea, right. And, and I couldn't tolerate any of it. I had what was beautiful about Overlook Hospital, as many hospitals have, they had a lot of complementary therapy. And I also had a nutritionist who was skilled in oncology. And she looked at me and laughed and like Oprah said, you can eat bread, you can eat bread, you can eat bread because that was what really worked for me. I was like, everything wouldn't stay inside of me. So right. I would tell people that, you know, you the booklets that they give you, I know everybody hates, but those treatments from Reiki to massage really help you get your mental right and your physical. I also realized that radiation was my one of my other biggest fears because I heard so many horror stories about it. I was blessed to find Coach Mo, Beef by Coach Mo on Facebook, where he was doing smart that he decided to change his practice into virtual personal training, one-on-one -on -one, or group personal training, or you could get his recordings. The group personal training is amazing because you see people right before you start and you're like, hey, and then you see people after. And I told him my whole story. He's my friend and my coach. Granted, I need to work on losing some weight now. I admit food has been kind of good these days, but he kept me going where I would walk probably five days a week because it was COVID. And then I would work out with him two to three days a week for a 30 minute class. And I sailed through radiation with not any problems except for my last day where my good girlfriend, who is my medical oncologist came over because my mother had made her a Trinidadian sweetbread. And I remember her walking towards me and I felt like I couldn't meet her. And then she said to me, you're having the side effects of radiation, you're tired. Literally, Ricky, I had two days of fatigue and bounced Not right that. back. And Not I that. attribute that to constantly keeping my immune system on point with, I drank a lot of Moringa tea, sour stuff tea from the, from the leaves where my good girlfriend, Shawnee in Miami would send me and being with coach Mo to keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Cause I said, I'm not going to succumb to the sequelae of chemo and or radiation. Chemo is what it is. There's some things you can't help, but radiation, you definitely can. And yeah. I was blessed having him in my life. Yeah. Keep moving and keep it moving. I think, yeah, you know, Absolutely. I didn't really have any issues with radiation because my chemo was so bad I think that by the time I got to radiation it was you like, like oh this is a piece of cake this is a cakewalk but um but yeah you we but I think that just finding ways to mentally deal with it helps mm -hmm. physically deal with it right okay so how am I going to make myself feel better today whether it's calling somebody you love you know what I did so my grandmother's favorite show was I love Lucy I love that show. Love right, it. <laughs> right. And so I watched I Love Lucy every day. I watched I watched all of my favorite kids shows. I Love Lucy, Dick Van Dyke, Mary Tyler Moore, like the Cosby show. Sorry, sorry for people who don't like Cosby anymore. But I watched, I watched like some comedy like every afternoon at two o'clock and ate chocolate. And my, my doctor actually gave me a, a, a prescription to eat dark chocolate almonds every day at two o'clock. So I would get out my chocolate almonds and eat and that was probably some of the times the only thing I ate that day because I had the same thing you did in terms of like losing it all exactly but, but um but I would watch a funny show and be laughing you're exactly right Ricky you're exactly right I I took watching comedy um Dave Chappelle um Joe Coy and I said those things were funny but I also love like com uh cartoons so like the Incredibles and those types of things, because they're, you know, they're made for kids, but they're really made for adults. Made for adults. Oh, the Incredibles are totally made for adults. Listen, right? I still I love the old Bugs Bunny love cartoons. I love yeah. Bugs Bunny. I love Roadrunner. Love Roadrunner, yeah. right? Yeah. Cool for adults. It's so yeah, Acme. Sometimes I, I I joke and I'll tell somebody it's made by Acme Industries and they'll just look at me like, yeah, say, you don't get it. It's okay. It's all right. I get it. You're right. <laughs> Laughter, I, I always, I understood, I heard a comedian say many, many moons ago that comedy really comes from pain. And there's times now, you know, I have um, some male friends who were diagnosed with prostate cancer and as they recovered through it, I would crack jokes that maybe the average person might be doing this, but it is funny when you look at certain things and you're like, this is the crap I went through. And you can mm -hmm. make a joke right. about it and laugh. Right. It, is, wow. it, it is partly therapeutic. You know, because laughter is the best medicine. It truly, truly is. It is. It is. And, you know, the whole process sucks. But if you can find some funny in there, it's a great thing. 
Mm -hmm. I, I love all this stuff to make yourself feel better, you know, because look, look how you came out the other side, you know, and, and even even when you're metastatic, you got to find ways to just find yep. peace in your life every day, you know, my saying, you know, your peace is non negotiable, my peace is not non negotiable, and Absolutely. You gotta find ways to do that and mm -hmm. make it happen. And it may mean saying goodbye to some people and Which hello happened. and hello to others, right? Which happened. Mm -hmm. Kind of mm -hmm. find out who your friends really are. Can I want to comment on that? So I was so blessed. One of my, I don't know if she's on tonight, but I, DJ Viney, and I have, a, I have a posse of a variety of friends. I have great friends, Jocelyn, I know, Jada, Althea, who are wonderful, Danielle. And then I became closer with friends that through the process, DJ Viney made sure I was always on point are you doing a vision board? How are you feeling? Did you do this? I'd be like, girl, can I get a minute? But she never relented and kept on right. me to make sure that I was okay. My sorority, everybody knows, the beloved, the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, um, my chapter, Omicron Xi Omega, my line sisters, my Oda Nu, Pi Oda Omega, Pi Kappa Omega, my former chapter, Delta Rho Omega, Tau Omega, all these great women that were, whether it was a phone call, whether it was sending me, girl, let me send you a gift card so you don't have to cook, whether it was putting a package out my door, mm -hmm. the Ivy socialites that um, for my birthday gave me non-alcoholic bottle of, it was like a fake uh, wine or champagne, this beautiful engraved glass, and somebody was knocking on my door, and I live in a gated community, so I'm like, who's at my door? And these women were outside with their balloons and masks on just to celebrate me, so having there's nothing that beats that to ele elevate you. And when That's friends amazing. show up and show out, you realize at your worst moment, you realize who, who your squad is. And I'm grateful for that. Yeah. And of course, my family and my ultimate best friend, my sister, who didn't let me let up. She cried with me. She held my hand. She's walked every step with me. I love her. I hope she's on. There was Without her, I wouldn't have made it through. And obviously my parents, who everybody got to see. So I'm blessed. And you know what, though? You're blessed to be a blessing. Somebody said in the chat, I have to read this out because it's touching. She said, we appreciate you so much. If only you knew how much you helped me to help a very close family member. Right. And that's what this is all about. It's, it's really, you know, people need to see what it looks like on the other side of mm -hmm. the treatment journey or what it can look like through that journey and mm -hmm. how, you know, I, I, I sometimes will refer my metastatic patients to Terlisa and to some of our other, you know, right. breast drivers and yeah. Jamil. And I said, listen, you know, right. you're allowed to have this moment. I said, but start looking forward, start looking ahead, start figuring out how we're going to live life beyond and, and with this diagnosis, because just because the cancer's over also doesn't mean that it's done and that, that you're right. able to have that peace of mind. So talk a little bit about that too, about that mindset. Cause I know you went to, uh, to Dubai and you went to the motherland and how did that help <laughs> your, your, your mindset? Cause it seems like you came back kind of with a, with a little new, yeah. uh, renewed sense of, right. of peace and purpose. So I wanted to do something special for uh, my cancer anniversary. I had never, I've never been away um, from my family. Let, let me not say that. I've never had the opportunity to go overseas for a major holiday. So right after Christmas, because, you know, I'm very close with my family. That wasn't going to happen. I had the opportunity to go with a friend and some other women to um, Dubai, South Africa, Cape Town. And just having, seeing how people live, Apartheid is at least, it, it's impacted our people where I feel like Black people are still at least 50 to 100 years probably behind the United States. That's how I felt in some areas. And then there were some areas I was amazed at, but just connecting with the motherland, being home, right. you know, was emotional for me. Um, getting to see what um, Mandela went through gave me hope. It made me look at life a bit differently. Um, going into the safari, everybody knows I'm terrified of the bugs. I'm terrified. Of, I don't, I'm not doing no camping. I ain't doing that. We did glamping. <laughs> and you. even with that, when we were close to some of these lions and I was giving the lion to look like, you know, I'm good, you good? Or the hyena or the elephant that was literally in the back of me, like wait, air is flapping in the camera. And I'm just like, hello, the, the elephant's behind me. Good day. It just gave me a whole new sense of gratitude that A, I'm here, and B, that I had the opportunity to do it, decompress, and see our people, which, you know, nothing can beat that. I, I think it was a trip of a lifetime. 
And I'm glad, I'm so glad that it gave me a renewed spirit when I came back. That's great. You can see God. You see God over there. God's creatures yes. that you don't see every day. That's yes. so awesome. I know, but we all need that that sort of getaway. Just to give you a reality check that there's so many things that are bigger than us. You know? Absolutely. Stuck in, Absolutely. Our, in our little cancer world and it's so much. And you know, Mo, when you said it goes away, it never goes away. You know, it never goes away. I'm 11 years nope. out. It never goes away. And maybe because I live with it every day because of what we do, but it never really mm. goes away. You're always thinking, you know, yeah. going to come back or what's going to happen or, you know. I have a friend who says cancer begins when it ends, right? Because all of the survivorship things, all of the issues, all of the, the uncertainty, all of the how do I reclaim my life? So much of it happens not when you're in the middle of it and you're surrounded by doctors and surrounded by support and surrounded by treatment. But at the end, you ring that bell for those people who are able to ring that bell. Right. And it's like, well, now what? Now what? Now what? Now right. what? Now what? Yeah. I definitely want to talk about that. You remember Monique when we did mm -hmm. Doctors After Dark? Yep. So, yep. We did, <laughs> so we did, sorry, mom and dad. That sounds fun. Talk about something. Close your ears. So we did Doctors <laughs> After Dark, which was about um, sexuality, sex after menopause and after having, you know, or having a cancer induced menopause because of menopause. a lot of times yeah. yeah and toxicin yeah. it will throw you into menopause and we had our sort of my chapter and other sororities and other guests on talking and monique was wonderful as well as our other sore posse uh, dr kelly drew lockhart from the mental aspects and a lot of people think you know cancer she's good you know and there's mm -hmm. so many things that you have to deal with your hair changes i mean my hair was wavy and i was like what's going you know, now it's getting, it's back, it's curliness. Um, some women and men go through sexual dysfunction, you mm -hmm. know, where they may not be able to perform like they used to. People's skin changes. I remember my hands were black. They were dark. Going yeah. My dad used to my stare at me. Like, black. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. My nails, even now I still use um, the powder dip system to keep my nails yeah. strong because right. my nails are too thin for the things I do in medicine where literally they split down the middle. I was bleeding, which can't happen, obviously taking care of a patient. So that's why I do that. But there's so many sequelae that cancer patients go through that people don't realize that it's a right. journey even after and how right. do you do that? And so that's why I push so much about, you know, talking about that journey and having, and even for the families, because sometimes your significant other is just like, but you're good, right? And you may not, not be 100% good. I mean, right. you right. know, those are things you have to have somebody who's open and honest and willing to listen to you to have those conversations and go with you through that process. And, you know, Ricky, you're engaged and I you know. have a wonderful, yeah. a wonderful fiance who, who probably knows as much about cancer as anybody else because he's on that journey with you, which is amazing and supports you through everything you do. I know, well, you know, his mom recently died of colon cancer and, um, but I, and I sort of became the cancer person in the family. We'll call Ricky. She'll know what to do. You know what I mean? But, but yeah, it's, it's a whole world that we live in that I hope nobody has to live in. Yeah. And, and dating is different after cancer. You know, yeah. I think that's a, a whole other subject, right? When you are single, how, how do you, um, that's a whole show. We gotta, we gotta do that. Show. Yeah. Yeah. We'll that would be a great show. I think we should yeah. save that for that show. I love it. I love it. <laughs> you can say something now, but yeah, I think that's a whole show. We we actually have that show on the docket um, because I think it is um 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 it's a thing. It's a thing. It is you a know? thing. It's, I mean, I will just say very very truncated brief statement. I was honest because I felt first of all I'm an advocacy. So and my name Cordai Dakota and I'm a doctor, I can't hide from that, nor did I want to. So right. you knew exactly who I was coming to me. And for me, I mean, Monique knows, even through radiation, I was dating a bit. And people were like, how are you dating through radiation and COVID? God. So I was I blessed where I was able to date and meet people after and, you know, one step at a time, I guess. One That's step good. at a time. But, also, but you know what? You have to... It's because you felt good about yourself. That's what I was just going to say, Ricky. Yep, yeah. it starts with yeah. you. Yeah, it yeah. starts with you, and you were you were feeling good, and you were feeling you're a badass. Your badassness yeah. came out, and that attracted another person or other people. And so, I think it's hard when you don't feel good about yourself, and that you know, I think people who struggle with dating, it's because 
they haven't found that that inner confidence that doesn't matter that you had cancer that inner confidence that just makes you stronger you know and makes you makes you feel like a badass because we all are. that's why i think the therapy the therapy is needed because you have to feel good about yourself before you can be good for somebody else and right. also realize that there's some people who are not going to be able to handle it then they're not meant for you because you don't need the stress yeah. and you know again for me i, I feel like we always say beauty starts on the inside, not the outside. But for a cancer patient, it's both. And so like oh, I said, wow. I had you know, my lashes, I had my hair, I was getting, when I could get, I was doing, um, what do you call that stuff? The temporary color. And then I did, when I could get my hair color colored, I was super excited for that. Because usually it's six months that you have to wait. You can tell me anything. I was like, I am cute. Because I was like, <laughs> I can, every stage was a big thing right. for me to feel better about myself. You know, and that's what I did. And that showed up on your Facebook and your social media. Like, look, am I cute there? What? I love it. You know, and mm -hmm. that, you know, you help so many people with that message about yourself. So you. we're grateful Thank for you. that for you. Yeah. All right. Let me ask you this question. So 2023, we're in January. We're almost a, a full month in, even though it feels like January dragged on forever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what should we look forward to from, from Dr. D, from talks with Dr. D, from yeah. KD Stylings, from your advocacy? What's on agenda for the year? So agenda one, um, I do a lot with my sorority. So we'll have some an event, obviously, in October to look out for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Looking to see what we're going to engage in for um, Women's History Month. I know I'm speaking at Rutgers for their public health department. Um, coordinating or collaborating with some other breast cancer groups that have asked me to speak, definitely in the midst of starting to write a book. It's been on my spirit and friends and family have been like, why not? That's a unique experience to be a, a medical professional during COVID with cancer, dating, all those types of things. So that's in the works. Um, and, you know, being here and present for people who have questions and support them, almost like having a coaching, which um, another breast cancer girlfriend of mine and I are trying to do. And you can always email me. I'm on social media at Talks with Dr. D on everything, but also emailing me at K as in Kite, D as in David, styling 18, the number 18 at gmail.com, where if you have questions, I will reach out to you. We will sit, we will talk. I am that person because I do believe that that's how you save one person at a time. You got that mug. Did you get her email? I put that in the talk. I put your email because to hold up that merch, that mug is everything. And there are there is much more merchandise available as well. So if you're interested in talks with Dr. D merch, if you would like a consult, you want to book for speaking and engagements, if you would like to learn more about her advocacy, support her advocacy, have her come to a chapter meeting, to a talk, to uh, some students, anything near you you can reach her because the message is very clear and it's very powerful. And we need to see young black women who are thriving despite a cancer diagnosis, who are educated in their community, who can speak to the medical and social and psychological and spiritual issues because it's all of those things for us. It's not just a chart and a tumor and a surgery and some chemo and some radiation. Like this is, cancer affects the whole person. The whole person. And, the whole yeah, person. And, and everybody that you touch. That everybody you touch. Everybody that you touch, and you're touching a lot of people. You touch a lot of people. And look out for Martha's Vineyard. Um, might be doing something special there. We won't say what it is until it happens, but yes. Call me about but, that. You know, we were talking yeah. about the vineyard today, Amanda and I, and um, you know, we we did an event there last year. Um I remember. Yeah, mm -hmm. so but call me about that. I love to talk to you about that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 The other thing that that Dr. Um Dr. D is gonna join us for, you know, we're doing this um the Harlem Fine Arts Festival. And I put mm -hmm. the link in the chat to buy tickets. It's February 24th, that weekend in Manhattan. Yes. And I know you have all your new New York friends are, are on the Zoom today. So I'm going to take advantage of that. But um, we're um, right. they reached out to us and said, we would love to honor some doctors. We would love to have you as a partner. And they're going to give us a percentage of our of ticket sales to do touch wow. work. So, so that's really good. But we'll be in New York and, and Dr. D is going to come hang out with us there. And I and, love it. Yes. Yeah, so. Join us there. We have a ball as we usually do, you know, yeah. with breasty Thanks. love yeah. and and supporting each other. And, you know, people who have questions, Ricky, myself, and, and Dr. Monique Gary, we're personable. We're still everyday uh -huh. women, you know, True. and 
that superwoman cape that, you know, sometimes people see. I might fly, as I say, I might Zoom with it in my work life, but I'm a regular everyday person. We cry, we heal, we, we grow, we learn, and we're here for your questions, whether it's a family member, because caregivers, you need support too. Sometimes mm. you don't know Everybody. what to ask, what to do. Mm-hmm. Everyone needs support. It's, it's, it's a village, just like it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a exactly. village when it comes to a cancer patient. It wow. absolutely yeah. does. It's, and every the whole family's sick when you yeah. get this diagnosis. Mm-hmm. So it takes all of us to help each other. And we're so grateful. Grateful for you to be here with us. Grateful mm-hmm. for you. Thank you so much. And um and and you guys watch on Sunday at three. We're gonna have our pink table talk with Haley and Dr. Candace launching our new young women's initiative for black breast health. So I love it. Join Beautiful. us and join us next week because we're going to launch it here too. I love it. And it's so necessary. And it's it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful campaign and an ongoing, you know, this isn't yeah. just a thing we're doing for this year. It's going to be something that's going to oh, start yeah. a movement because that's yeah, kind of what Ricky right. does. And it's sort of what touch is all about. And it's kind of what Dr. D is all about. All it's, about. It's, yeah, it's we're going to yeah, you be an ambassador. You, we're going to make you an ambassador of this show. I Watch. would love it. Mm. I would love it. All right. And wow. thanks, Dad, for joining us, hiding in the background. I, I love that <laughs> Listen, your, your family is so proud of I'm you. You're serious. I know. I love it. You know, they I, when show I kept up. seeing your last name, I said, okay, they got to come on. <laughs> I love and it. I think that's powerful for people who are watching too, because sometimes we don't like to talk to our fans about everything, but you rob them of the chance to show up for you in really important ways. Absolutely. Like sometimes you really can see what your family means to you and what you mean to them by going through this journey with them. So if you're going through a cancer diagnosis and a cancer journey and you feel like you don't have anybody and you don't want to talk to your family, we can even help you to have yeah. those conversations yeah. Yeah. because you should really, you, you shouldn't have to go through it alone. We can connect you to community through touch, through talks with Dr. D. There's people in your area. We can connect you to breasties right. in your area. I mean, you don't need to be going to these appointments by yourself. No, we got and some untouchables all over the country that will go. I believe it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. So and we're here for you. And Everyone talk about it, you know, even, yeah. even your diagnosis, you know, yeah. if you want to talk about talks with Dr. D, you want to talk and, you know, and say, hey, doc, I was diagnosed with stage blah, 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 this, this, what does that mean? We can sit down and talk about it. So feel free to reach out to us at, at my email. That's why we're here. You got the biggest heart, Doc. I truly just, I love you. You're a connector of people. You are, are just the personification of God's love for, for, for black women. It's it's all in you and how you love black women. So I, I'm and the I'm brothers too to know because remember black men get breast cancer. So the oh, brothers too. Say it I know loud we, for the ones yeah. in the back. Say it loud. Yeah, and brothers we're here too. To them too. Yeah, brothers <laughs> too. And and you know we all have to do it together. You know, That's right. absolutely. It's a alone. village. Well, we hope this has been relatable and reliable and real. That's what we set out to do every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Eastern on blackdoctor.org. Thank you to Dr. Cordai Dakota of Talks with Dr. D. Um, and thank you to our sponsors. And thank you, Ricky, for having the vision to even have a show and, mm-hmm. and be on Absolutely. Black Doctor because it, it really is changing a lot of lives. So we'll Keep see you doing next it, time. Mo. Love you, Mo. Can do this I love you, too. Mo. I love you, too. Right. The doctor love. is in. Resty love, resty love. love. And Join D us Joseph Sunday. is trying to get in the Zoom. G Joseph is still trying to get people still trying to get in the Zoom. Oh, oh my resty gosh, love. that's a lot we'll of love. We'll see you Sunday, right? <laughs> Sunday, what time? Sunday at three p.m. Sunday Eastern at three. time for Pink Table Talk. All Sounds right, good. yeah. Bye. Love you.